Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Today we are going to be looking at how to create a top-down tracker. So this was specifically used, there was a, a camera mounted above above a, an installation zone and I was trying to track people as they moved through it and this is the method that I used to get there. So what the goal is, it's to take an image from above, sample it against itself and then say, okay, has anything changed since the last frame? If so, mark that up. And then all we're going to do is we're going to get a really clean black on white image of things that have changed that we can then run through a tracker. First thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm not going to bring in my webcam today. I'm just going to use our favorite red ball because webcam is face on here so it doesn't really serve the video that well. And what we're going to do is we're going to use something called slide, jit.slide. And if you have a look at the tutorial for this, the help file, you can see that we're going to use cell-wise temporal envelope follower. And in simple terms, all this does is if it looks at the matrix, and if a value went from, say, 0 to 1 over 10 frames, and we set the slide to a certain value, it will then make that go from, say, 0 to 1 over 15 frames, depending on the value we have in the slide. So, what are we going to do? We so we've got our matrix coming from jit.redball we're going to put that into jit.operator and we're going to set our operator as a, b, yes, diff, so absolute difference so we're going to be comparing one matrix to another and getting it to flag up the absolute difference between the two for us so that's going to come down there I'm going to bring my jit.slide over here and plug that in as the second matrix and I'm going to have red ball come into the top of jit.slide as well. And we're going to add in some code to the end of this. So we're going to have jit.slide at uh, slide underscore up two. And then we're going to have space slide underscore down two. So that's just going to set some default values for us. But we're going to plug in a, a load message that uh, sets it to their, our desired one. So because we have these operators defined, we can send a message to jet.slide containing them. So I'm going to have a message that slide up dollar uh, $1 and comma, because I want to send it two separate messages in the same one, slide underscore down dollar $1, because I want both the values to be the same here. I'm then going to, from trial and error, I know that uh, 500 is roughly what we want to be sending here. And we're just going to put that into an integer, put that into our message, and load bang it. So what is this actually doing? Let me just check that's sending it. Yeah, so we're getting slide down 500 here. Because we have the comma, it said slide up 500, and then it sent a second message, slide down 500, so that uh, jet.slide is receiving both of them at the same time. What is this doing? So I'm going to add a comment that the cell Y is temporal shifting. It's, it's almost like the lengthening of transformation within the matrix. So it sets the time on recording off setting the higher the number the further into the past the comparison goes in experience 500 is roughly three seconds here. so what this program is going to do is going to compare our original matrix against our slid matrix or our slide matrix and it's going to hold this slide matrix for around three seconds so it's going to say okay between three seconds ago and now what has changed in the scene if something has changed we're going to pass it through and flag it up as bright white if nothing's changed we're going to flag it up as black 500 means that it's going to look three seconds into the past if you want it really long you could add this put this number as further and further uh, higher and higher as you want but obviously the, the higher the number the more uh, intensive it is on your RAM because we're storing uh, um, loads of matrix fields here. 
So when I have this 360 by 240 film, it's fine, but if you're doing full HD as we were on the, in the installation, it's much, much more intensive. Next, we need to add a black and white. So we're going to put in our favorite jet.rgb to Luma. And I'm going to again add some variables here because I want it to be a really high contrast scale. So I'm going to do R scale. 0.3 G scale 0.3 and then what's the last one B scale 0.3 now and all that's doing is changing the normal default scales which are roughly around 0 0.3 0 0.6 and 0 0.1 basically it's either white or it's black in this case bring that in there and then all we need to do is we could put this through and it would give us just a, a grayscale footage, but now we need to gate it. We need to add a threshold to say, okay, if something is over this value, let it through. If not, leave it as black. So we get another jit.op. Our operator is greater than, and our value is going to be 0. Point, you can put anything you want in here, but I found between 0. 0.15 and 0. 0.2 tends to have the best results. And I'm just going to add a float option here so that I can control it. Uh, Jit.p window, let's have a visualization of what we're actually doing. And let me just show you so everyone's familiar with Red Ball moving around. Let's set it to loop, play, I'm going to load by that, and then you'll see here that this will slowly start to fill out. So it takes the elapsed time, so this 500, the full slide of 500 needs to fill up roughly 3 seconds, and when it does, we're left with just this pure image of white. The only thing that move, or the only white that comes through, are changes. Right, so what does this do? What can we actually do with this? We could break this down and look at these values in a cell block and see if anything is either 0 or 1 but the cv.jit library includes some really useful tools for tracking this so we're going to use something called cv.jit.touches and what this is, there's no help file for this unfortunately but this is a form of tracker and it's a really good tracker because it uses clumps of pixels rather than individual pixels to group together uh, tracking points and uh, with cv.jit.touches.draw, we want to actually visualize it. So when we plug that in, obviously I have to bring in the original food digital background, otherwise we don't get a bang. But when we look at it, uh, let me zoom in here, you'll see that we have a track point following our blob and this works with any footage the longer that you leave the slide open the more accurate a track you're going to get and the higher this threshold the uh, more the, the, the tighter the uh, tracking is going to be but as you can see I can lower it down and it really starts to go all messy and fuzzy because it's letting it's letting almost the ghost because it's not got a perfect refresh rate through so if we leave it about 1.2 in this case it's going to be clear and as I said at the start this was used in an overhead tracking system and that's the only place I could really see it implemented because when you do it face on let me bring in my webcam if I bring in the webcam footage to here let me just stop Red Bull and then that goes there and Right, okay, so I would say it's got a full image now. I move through, and you can see it starts tracking me. But because this is face on rather than top down, and it's very close, there's loads of track points. We could play about with cv.jit.touches and create a, a much higher threshold, but for now, we're not going to mess about with that.